workshop and I'll be leading this workshop. Uh, so the inner people, we were hunters majority, like that's how we got the majority of the food and to do that they have to go around the land. On the land you could only rely on yourself and like your own sort of like physique and so you have to be strong mentally, physically and spiritually and these orchid games are just a way of like making sure that you were like physically strong, mentally strong and spiritually strong. Uh, so for today I'll be showing you guys two or three, depending on how much time we have, uh, games. The first one I'll be showing you is called the Stick Puss. It is it's more focused on flexibility and you're able to like, kind of like move your body the way you want to. And I guess we'll just get into it. So in order to follow along at home, you need a, just a broom handle with a, like the broom head on it. So I have one right here, you can see. So to start this game, you want to take your broom handle or just a long stick that you have and you want to place it behind your back and not get your seal. Okay, so you start with it behind your back with two with your two hands facing forwards. Then you take this you take your stick or your broom and you put it in front of you. Just put it around your front. And then what you do is you take one of your hands and put it in between your legs. So then once you're out of like you want to take the leg that's on the outside of the stitch and just bring it in, in between. So then you want to take the hand that's in front of you, bring it all the way around your body, and then just step out. So that's only half of it, because you have to take your hand, one of the hands to take the stick around your body and then take it back around. So then you just do all the steps that you did the first time. And you do it in reverse. So then you step over it, then you take your hand and you bring it all around your body, then you step over it, and then bring it back. So it was it is a competition. So the winner was determined by how close your hands are. The closer your hands, the more difficult it is, and also how fast you can do it. So again, let's do it once more and just slowly. So start with it behind your back with your hands facing forward. Then you bring it and you bring it around this forward. So then you take one of your hands and you put it in between your legs and then you step over in between your arms. Then you take the hand that's in front of you, you want to bring it around your back and step over. If you let go at any point, that is considered a loss and like you have to start over. It doesn't matter if it slides off, if you just let go. If your hand le leaves the broom, it's considered a fail drug. So then to go backwards, you step over in the middle of it. Then you take your hand and you bring it all the way around your back. Then you step over. It is, it is quite difficult. That's why it's focused on flexibility, and it's not as easy as it looks. So again, behind your back with your hands facing forward, bring it around. You take one hand and you put it in between your legs. Then you take the foot that's on the outside. So you see how. My shoulders are facing the leg that's going to be brought in between the arms. So then you take the arm that's in front of you, you drag it all the way around, and you step over. <laughs> and then you go backwards. So then if you got this far, your hand should be facing up to the sky with a broom in your hands. And then you step over the broom with one foot. So that you kind of have the broom in between your legs. And then you take your arm all the way around. You step over. So the broom is again in front of you, but this time your arms are in a little awkward position. And you just take it behind your back again. Any questions? No, it's not as easy as it looks. So the game is determined by how fast you can go. 
and how close together your hands are. So let's just see how fast I can do this. So just around in between, step forward all the way around and then backwards. All the way around, step over and back. You do need to be quite flexible as you can see and you guys might have noticed you need to be a little bit flexible for this. Can you do it the other, the other direction with the other arm? Oh yeah, I can do that. I, I'm just more comfortable doing that way, but I'm do it the other way as well. So then one arm in between your legs, step over all the way around, step over, and then again backwards, step over all the way around. Got a little stuck there. It's okay. Cool. All right. So the other direction is the same thing, except you know you're going the other direction than I did. So you bring it over. So the first time I went my left arm through because that's what I feel more comfortable. But if you if you do feel more comfortable putting your right arm through, then there's that. And then you take your right leg and you step over. And bring your left arm all the way around and step over and put your left leg. Going backwards, in my opinion, is a little bit harder. It's a little bit more difficult for me. And then same thing, when you're going backwards, you want to step over. This time with your left foot instead of your right foot. And then take your left arm all the way around. Step over with your right foot. Hands are back in this position. And then back around. Oh, that built up a sweat. So all of these games are not necessarily easy to do. But with enough practice, you should be able to do it. And it does prove to be quite a good party trick, as you know. So do you have any good stretches that would help with your shoulders for that? So yeah. I kind of forgot to stretch. That's a very important thing to do with these games that I completely forgot to do. I'm always like, stretch, stretch. <laughs> so yeah, stretch, stretch. Stretching is very important, especially because you don't want to tear anything, you don't want to pull anything out of place, you don't want to make anything go where it's not supposed to be going. So, some good stretches to either warm up or, or cool down from this are like bringing your hands behind your back and just, you know, putting your arms in that type of position. Bring them back. And then I also like to bend forward and bring my hands up, face them to the sky. This that stretch helps open up the kind of like shoulders, like especially in this area, and it also helps to stretch this part of your arm. So with every stretch, you want to hold for at least 30 seconds because that helps release all the like, lactic acids that, built, that are built up in there or just to get them worked up for your next exercise. So again, just your hands back there, and then bend over, and bring them up. And just hold that for a while. If it hurts, that's a good sign because then you know your muscles are getting stretched. Stand up. We have an audience question. <laughs> Steve wants your dad to demonstrate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel like if my dad were to demonstrate this, he wouldn't get past the first step. But you know, if he's willing to try it, I'll get him to try and demonstrate. Right now? Huh? You want to demonstrate? <laughs> no. <laughs> that was a quick no. All right. So some other stretches that are very good, especially because this whole game is based around the flexibility of your arms, your upper body. It's not really as important to stretch the lower half of the body, although you should. So I'm just going to focus a lot more on upper body. So again, Again, with your shoulders, you can like round them out and try and, get, like, try and give someone a big hug. And you want, you want to like punch your shoulders forward because those are the shoulders where they normally are. And you can put them forward and just give a big hug to someone. This will help open up the back side of your shoulders right along here. And that also is like a very big muscle that you really want to stretch as well. So again, you just want to give someone a really big hug for about 30 seconds as well. 
it should also, you should also be able to feel it all the way down here. Hold that for about 30 seconds and then just shake it out. I also like shaking my body out after each stretch that I, stretch that I do, just in order to release all the acids that might have built up. For example, like lactic acid, which is not very fun to have in your system for a long time. Another stretch, if you can find yourself a wall, is to just place your hand against the wall and just put your entire arm by it. Uh, I'm kind of out of frame here. So just stretching that part of your arm by again just placing your arm on the wall, stepping forward and towards the wall. And then again, just switching to the other arm. So basically the same thing. So you place your hand on the wall, and you place your entire arm against it, and you step forward. Stretch that out. Yeah, hold that for about 30 seconds. And you should be good. Like that really just opens up your shoulders in the front and along the back side of the thumb. Nice. Do you have any progressions for the stick? If you like just go back and forth a few times, or are there yeah. any tips for that? So, some progressions that you could do, I say, is like focusing on the steps individually and not so much on the whole entire, you know, activity as a whole. But focus on like its different parts. And once you have one part down, move on to the next. So, so the first one is just like taking your hands from behind you, in front of you, and just doing that over again. Just that, that like, easy rotation in. So something that you might have noticed I do is I bring one hand over and like one hand bends as the other one stays straight. So you see how my left arm is completely straight where my right hand bends. And that's really just an easy way to get your hands around it. So just doing that and then this next step is one of the hardest is when you put like one hand between your legs and step over. So just trying I would say just like putting one hand in between your um, legs and then like taking it to the ground would be very good. So trying to like get that, kind of like, and then like stepping over. It's a lot easier to step over when you're on the ground as opposed to like up here because what when you one stick is higher, it requires you to move your leg a lot more. So you see my leg is coming up, so like my knee is basically touching my shoulder, whereas when I'm down here. My knee is already touching my shoulder, so I don't have to like move it as much as I already do. So once you have that step down, when, once you can comfortably, I can see you, comfortably get that to the ground and step over, I would say just slowly raising the bar until you at a place where you can just put it anywhere in between your legs and step over. But once you actually do get the entire thing completely like set, you shouldn't be placing the bar down low because it does just like kind of waste time in a way. And also it's not that, it's not as, it's not as seen as like as competitive as like having it higher. The next part is not really much progression to do once you have the rest of it down. So the part where you take this hand around your body, there's not much um, progression to do there. It's just like a matter of kind of like getting that stretches and like just increasing flexibility there by either like, you know, doing this stretch. This is also a very good stretch where you have one arm straight across your body and then you kind of like bend your other arm and just like pull. Just getting overall flexibility in your arm. Now those are the progressions that I can think of to do, for doing this game. Yeah. That's so awesome. I'm really glad 
we got to see that. Does anybody, I wonder if anyone wants to demonstrate. Steve should demonstrate, you know. Favorite uncle. <laughs> My favorite uncle. <laughs> If he says that, then you got to demonstrate, Steve. <laughs> this ain't be working on this iPad, sorry about that. <laughs> Not as flexible as I used to be, goodness. Um, how close can you put your hands together? Oh, I've never actually seen how close I can put my hands together. So this will be fun. Don't hurt yourself, but. I'll, I'll try not to. So I tend to like place my hands at the end of the stick, but that's not about it. I think I get here. So you see how my hands are not at the end of the stick this time. Let's see. Oh, no, my hands slid to the end. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. So I can only do it at the end of the stick just for the part of bringing it around my shoulder. So I guess like, even though I've been doing it for about a year now, I still can't get my hands close together at all. I mean, I can't even do it. So I think you're, you're doing it. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Right. Yeah, the winner is determined by how like close your hands are and, how, and at the speed that you do it. And how close your hands together is more important than the speed that you, that you can go. Awesome. So I guess that game was like to kind of test your flexibility and also like how much pain you can endure in your shoulder. <laughs> well, once you like get it down, like you can do it enough times, the pain that you feel at first does go away. And it does. <laughs> like you don't, I, when I do it, I don't feel as much pain as I do when I first started doing it. Yeah, it's definitely more focused on flexibility compared to like the, the uh, high kick that I'll be showing. Does anybody have any final questions about that? Or does anybody want to show what they've got? I'm thinking, no. Oh, what was the name called? So it's called a stick twist. It's not fairly common. It's actually quite uncommon and it has like gone out of popularity a lot. Like the first, I've been involved in Arctic sports since the age of five, and the first time I heard about it was a couple of years ago. So I would say it is not as common as some of the other games. And yeah, but it's called the stick twist. Yeah, I think it's a fun, fun warm up game at least. So thanks. Yeah. For awesome. I feel like a lot of people will want to know about the kicks though. Yes, that is what we're going to next. So if anyone has, any further questions about stick twist, they can just ask in the chat and I'll be happy to answer any questions that come along with the way. But the next game I will be showing is called the high kick. There are many variations to this game, but I'll be showcasing three. Uh, that is the Alaskan, one foot and two foot. Starting off with the two foot, then Alaskan, and then finishing off with the one foot. So this game was to, uh, just to keep people in shape and just to you know, have a friendly competition between men of like the communities. It's kind of like, you know, boys being boys. And again, for this one, it is very important to uh, stretch because it does involve jumping and does involve a lot of uh, movement. So I would suggest stretching. So if you can find yourself a wall, that would be great. And then you want to take one foot and just Bring it all the way up to your bum and just kind of like stretch your thigh and like the like right here along, just like the front side of your thigh. Just holding that again for 30 seconds and if it does hurt, that is a good sign, not a bad sign. Once you've done that, and then just shake it out a little bit. Make sure none of that acid that you just stretched out is still there. And then just the other side as well. So the same thing, grabbing your heel, grabbing your foot, and just bringing it up to your bum and just 
you can sort of stretch. And since this game doesn't involve your arms, there isn't any stretching that goes on above your body. It's all focused on the lower part of your body. You're just holding that up for 30 seconds, just kind of like shaking it out a little bit. So the next one, you will have to sit down for this one. And then you want to take your leg into your arm and just roll your ankles a little bit in, cir in circles. This will just help get a little bit more flexibility in your ankles if there isn't that much in them. It'll just help loosen them up a little bit. You just want to like do like a circle motion in your, in your foot, rotate in your ankle. And then you want to go the opposite direction that you were going. Do started clockwise, go counterclockwise, and start counterclockwise, go clockwise. Turning things up a little bit, just making sure to get the maximum amount of rolling in your ankles. And then you would just want to switch your feet, switch your legs, and just do the same exact thing, just rotating. You just want to switch directions. Thinking you're going the opposite direction you were going. And then you're all good. So then you can stand back up. For this game, the high kick, you will need a target. I have this stand that was built by my father, if I'm correct. Um, you can just use like a bunch of socks piled up with a string attached to it. Or if you have a, uh, someone with you, you can just use their hand so that they will hold up your hand and you just and then you pick it like that. But I have this stand, so I'll be using it. So, like I said, the very first one I'll be showing you guys is the two foot. Um, yeah. Uh, a lot of in your games were like spontaneous and not very structured so that they could be played in many different ways, many different fashions and just like on the spot. So there's not a lot of rules that go into these games. For example, high kick, the only rules that there is is that for two foot, you have to take off the two foot, hit the target with two feet and land into the two feet. If you fall over, it's considered a mess. If you miss the target, obviously it's a mess. And uh, for everything, you have three chances to hit the target at every height, and then you're out. And it's a competition to see who can go the highest, and not really how hard you can hit the target. It doesn't, as long as you touch the target, it doesn't matter how hard you hit it. So there's two different ways to do it. You can either stand and kick it, or you can take a little running start, so you can just like, take one or two steps, jump up, and then hit the target. So I'll just be showcasing this. So uh, I do the stand in place and kick it up until a place where I where I miss and then I start doing it. But I start traditionally it was done just by like standing on place just so that they didn't have big enough spaces. It's like you're running start all the time. So again, just to reiterate, you need to like start with your two feet together, jump up, hit the target with both your feet, and land with two feet. So then you jump up, hit with two feet, and you land. Um, you also hop afterwards, just to showcase to the judges, because there are judges who judge them, um, that you do have balance, because if you lose your balance at all and fall over, it's considered a miss. So, yeah. Um, also, just to protect the ground that you're on, and your feet, and your and like your entire body, you want to make sure that you're landing light, and you're not landing heavy and flat footed. So when you land, you really want to land on your toes or like, you know, the front part of the front part of your foot and then just like slowly going down. So like when you jump up, you land and then you go down to flat foot, flat feet, just so to protect your ankles from not getting any damages. So once everyone has hit the target or I am uh, so if you ever played high jump when track and field is kind of like a lot of the same thing where everyone has a chance and then the people who miss go again and the people who miss that round go again and then whoever misses the last round is out. 
Um, but once everyone has it, the target of the round moves to the next one. The target is moved up. Um, it is moved up by two inches until a point where it gets difficult. Then the competitors can decide to move the target up one inch at a time instead. So for this, you just move the target up a tiny bit. And then you go again. So you just jump up, kick it, land, advance a little bit. If you have a stand like me, what I do is I take my two fingers and I like just glide across the string to make sure that the target is not moving at all. Just so I have like, a clear place of where the target's going to be and where I can hit it instead of it moving all over the place. And again, you move it up a bit. And then you go again. So you go up, you kick it, you bounce a little bit. And then... Cool. Is the swinging of the arms like super important? Do you use that? The swinging of the arms will give you momentum going up. Um, that's why I do it. Some people do just like keep their hands down, which is not very helpful to them because it doesn't provide you any momentum. Yeah. So it'll just help you uh, uh, propel you upwards and just like help you reach your target instead of just like just being there. Awesome. Yeah, we got to um, do some Arctic games at our feast last year for Indigenous Peoples Day. Fortunately, we didn't have one this year, but hopefully next time we meet as a Toronto group, we'll get to try some of these out. Yeah. So obviously this isn't my max height. So why not let's just see how I can go with the different methods. So um, again, you just want to continue going up at a steady pace. You don't want to like start like going up at like very like big increments and then all of a sudden like switch to a small then go back to big. You just want to go up at steady increments. So I increase a little bit and then I jump again. <laughs> I was allowed to jump, but it's fine. And then you just want to steady your target again. And then obviously, if you have someone with you and they're doing the hand thing, make sure they're keeping a steady hand instead of like moving it, going up and down. Just make sure that their hand is there and staying there until you hit it. Awesome. Do you like this with bare feet or with? Yeah, yeah sorry. I do bare feet just because I find it more comfortable and I find it easier when I land to have a soft landing and not to injure myself. Although you can do it with shoes on or with socks on or no socks. Sorry, no socks. You can do it with shoes on if you'd like. Um, I don't do it because I find it uncomfortable and not as, like, I find myself, I'm able to kick higher barefoot than with, um, with shoes on. Yeah, but like um, in actual competitions, because they do still compete in high kick, um, in Arctic sports, and in many competitions. Um, if you start with shoes on, you have to stay shoes on until the end. If you start barefoot, you have to stay barefoot till the end. So then the next um, kind of style I'll be showing you guys is the Alaskan. It is probably the hardest one. Does anybody want to demonstrate their two foot high kick? Does anyone want to demonstrate their two foot? That's a very good question. Francis. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what? <laughs> want to show? <laughs> I don't, I didn't have anything to kick. Okay. That's fine. Just practicing the jumping is good too. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't jump very high. <laughs> Don't apologize. Yeah, something very important is that you have to land with two feet, and like, I guess when you're when you land, like uh, I do hops just to prove that I have balance, and many other people do that as well. You have to continue those hops with two feet as well. But obviously, if you're just starting out, it's okay to like kind of like split your feet apart just know that um when you land you have to have two feet together or else it's considered a mess did you have to feet, keep your feet like super glued together in the air or 
Yeah, you do. So if your feet are apart in the air, that is also considered a miss. So if your feet are like, so your feet should be like this, hitting the target. But if they're like that, it's considered a miss. And if they're obviously if they're apart, it's considered a miss as well. Cool. Sounds like there are no more questions for the two foot high kick, but great job. Cool. So the next one is the last one. It is the hardest one, the most complex. Um, I'm saving one for last just because it is the easiest and I'd like to end high kick on an easy note. Opposed to like the hardest one. So Alaskan hiking is very different from the, the, the two foot and the one foot as you are on the ground basically. So for Alaskan, your base, uh, I start off by sitting on the ground with my feet in front of me with my knees up. Um, then you take your least dominant hand and you have an open hand and you place it as close to your hip as possible and then you have it down on the ground. Then you take um, the same foot, that, the same side that your hand is on the ground, and you grab it with the other hand. And then the foot that's not being held, the one that is the one you'll be kicking with. So you want to kind of like prop yourself up on your hand and your foot. And a good way to like get prepared to actually like kick is just by like repeating the motion of like going up and down, up and then down, and then when you're ready up and then kick. So it's really important to like have a steady base and have like a, like be comfortable in this position. So again, you want to take your hand, open hand to your, um, close to your hip as possible. Hold your foot. And then again, you can just go up. And if you're not ready, go back down. And then you go up to kick. And then you land on the same foot that you kicked with. And you have to land where your like the rest of your body is not touching the ground. If you land and like either your bum or your other foot touches the ground, it is considered a miss and you will have to like try again at the height. Next round or if it's your third chance, you will lose. Um, a very important part of high kick is having balance. So if when you land, and you, and you lose your balance, that is considered a mess as well, even if you kick the target. For example, if I went up and I kicked it, I landed, but then I fell down, it would still be considered a mess because it's a sign that um, I don't have balance and that I and that I should have like, you know, I don't know how to explain that part, but like you need to like be balanced when you land. And then the same with the other ones is uh, you move up and two inches at a time to, until like it gets too hard. But then you start going up at one inches at a time. Are you going to demo that one, Paige? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a gymnastics background, but when I tried this as an adult, it was not, <laughs> not very successful. So yeah, um, again, the competition is, you know, you go up, you try and kick it again, and then you go up some more, and you try and kick it again. But if there's a tie at the height, they look at all the other heights, and whoever has missed the least amount of times is declared the winner, opposed to like, who like had the least amount of misses at that height. Well, I guess you both have three heights at that height if you lost. Any questions about that one? Uh, if you guys want another demonstration, I can demonstrate again. I would just have to down. Yeah, can we see it again? Of course. Awesome. But my string just got tangled. There you go. All right. So, again, you want to be down on the ground. Your least on the hand, right by as close to your head as you can get on the ground with your fingers. Uh, spread out just to like provide yourself more balance. So then you take uh, your least dominant foot, you grab it with your dominant hand, and then you kind of prop yourself up on your hand and your leg, and then you go up, kick, and then you land back down. 
and then you can step down after you've proven that you have balance, but obviously if you fall down, it's going to be a bit of a mess. Yeah. Do you ever practice on the other side? Uh, no, because the other side is my weak side, it's my least dominant side, and if I practiced on that side, it would just kind of be pointless in a way because I've never used that in an actual competition. Yeah, yeah. How do you find out your dominant side? Um, I go by like what side I write on. So for example, I write with my right hand, I'm right-handed. So that's the hand that isn't on the ground, if that makes sense. Nice. Yeah. Do you, so it's like, sorry, you uh, Do you have any progressions? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so just um, going as low to the ground as possible with your target. The target doesn't have, for example, right here, it's around like just below my hip. But when I started, I remember like the target basically being at the floor because I wasn't able to kick that. Like I wasn't able to kick high at all. Uh, but a good progression is just getting that motion and just getting that kind of um, movement down. So just like going up and then back down, then up and back down will just kind of help you. Uh, when you do decide to kick, it'll help you get that, like, be ready for it and be able to do it fluidly. Anybody want to show off their moves? I'm going to ask every time. <laughs> Anyone want to demonstrate Alaskan other than me? And did you have to, like, know how to do a handstand or anything before this? No, I can't do, I can't, I can't even do a cartwheel. Like, I have no gymnastic background whatsoever. Um, you don't need it. Um, it's just a matter of having balance in yourself and just, it's completely different than being able to do a handstand or any other sort of like gymnastic, like thing. Yeah, I feel like you also need a lot of like core strength. Like I have a lot of lower body to lift up. <laughs> but yeah, I guess practice makes perfect too. Yeah, like it's all about practice. Um, no one's amazing when they first start, especially at Alaskan. Uh, it is considered one of the most difficult ones to do. Yeah, it's just all about practice and repetition. Awesome. Have you done that one where you like um, hold your big toes and try to jump? Uh, I've never heard of that one, actually. No? No. I'm not sure who showed me, but it was like at a conference in BC, and you literally stand there. It's really hard, like it sounds easier, but you hold your big toes and then try to jump. <laughs> I can't do it clearly. <laughs> Maybe I should try that one sometime. Um, yeah, so... Uh, I'm just going to go into like the seal. So traditionally it is like a little seal figurine used when you're doing high kick. Um, just to symbolize like who we are as people and like how we have relied on the seals to like kind of get us through every, our everyday life and help us survive. Uh, so this one was given, given to like me and my family by my original teacher, Ernie Bernhardt. Um, he's the one who taught me everything that I know about high kick. He trained me at a young age. He's, we start, uh, he started training me when I was just five years old, and then he continued training me when I was six. Then we moved away, so we had a big break, but then he continued training me once I grew older. Uh, however, a lot of things have changed, especially in modern hiking. For example, uh, today, a lot of competitions, you'll see like a, a seal of balls used instead, but uh, every single target that you see will be covered in seal skin. That being said, if you're just practicing, you don't need a seal ball, you don't need a seal figurine, you can just use someone else's hand. You can use a bunch of like socks bunched up with the string attached if you really want to. Um, but if you do go to a competition, you will see either a seal figurine or a seal ball being used. So. Any more questions about Alaskan? I think that's my favorite one to watch. <laughs> it is quite difficult to do. 
Okay, now Steve is asking you to like, <laughs> please. Like wrestle my dad. Uh, that's not if if we do have time at the end and we do get into like wrestling, my brother and my dad will be the ones uh, demonstrating while I go over how to do it pro pro uh, properly. However, we still have one more um, high kick uh, kind of like variation to do, and that's one foot. Uh, it is considered the easiest to do, the easiest to learn, um, uh, but also the highest kicker. For example, I'm able to kick well above my head into like the 6'3 range, uh, but I've seen people kick up to like seven feet. Uh, I've heard people kicking up to like, like seven and a half feet, almost eight feet as well. So for this one, it's much like two foot where you have to take off with your two feet together. Uh, but the difference is you only kick with one foot and you land with one foot as well. Um, if you land with your two feet together, it is considered a miss. Uh, and you have to land on the same foot that you kicked with. So to start out, it, this is a pretty low height for me. Um, however, starting out, you, especially with like younger children, they do want to start off much, much lower. Like almost at the ground low. Uh, this is a way to help your body warm up to it and also to, uh, so it isn't at like a crazy height right off the start and no one can make it. So to start off, you, step, you start with your two feet together, you jump up to kick the target around the same foot. So you just jump up, kick it, hitting them, and uh, you bounce a little bit with the one foot that you kick to it. So then again, you just move up a little bit. And then you kick it again. Now, um, you will see my target right now going all over the place. That's just because, like I said before, I can kick much higher. It's just a matter of um, me kicking the target too hard. Like I said in the beginning, it doesn't matter how hard you kick the target, as long as you touch it, even if you just like brush it with your toe, that is still considered a hit and still considered like you moving on to the next site. Um, actually, a lot of elders uh, will barely touch the target just to make sure that the judges are watching them and make sure that the judges have a keen eye and can see and are actually like, good judges. So then you just move higher, you pick up again, you study out your target, and you keep moving higher and higher until eventually you reach a place where you can't get any more. So apparently the record for the men's is 10 feet. And the record for the women is seven and a half feet. So that's quite high. That's amazing. I wonder how tall. <laughs> so if there's any questions, how to do it, um, the heritage behind it, I guess. Or like, does anyone want to demonstrate their one foot? I don't know if there are any questions. You really want to see somebody try it. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you guys like, I will. I can do a demonstration until like I get to the point where I can't hit it anymore. Ooh. I'll take that as yes. Okay. Oh, Kyle just said that the record holder is Tim Fields, and he's five foot eleven. Ooh. That's A five foot eleven dude kicking. Ten feet tall. So again, so this is I don't know. This is about just like my hips, my waist, not my hips. You know things. So again, just kick it, and you see, you can see the target spin around a little bit. That is a sign that I did kick it. So then again, you just move up a little bit, and you kick it. Uh, so the kick does have to be by your feet if you accidentally like go too far and you hit it with your shin, that is still considered a miss because you have to kick it with your feet, not your shin. Um, when I do this for, let's say I want to showcase my culture at a event and I do one foot for a large group of people, I'll kind of like put on a show for them. So for example, I might start wearing like a bunch of clothes, like a suit and a tie, and then 
slowly like take stuff off and underneath all these that I would have shirts and things off. And I'm like, you know, just give a little show and then once it reaches like above my head, I'll just kinda like walk underneath it and like look up at it and then keep kicking. So again, you just want to continue picking. So I, like I said before, there's two ways of doing high kick. You can either stand in one pace and kick, or you can take like a little like walk up and kick. Um, I do standing in one pace until I miss, and then I start doing the walk up. That's my mom. <laughs> Then you just want to continue going up until you uh, until you feel it's too difficult for you to moving up at such big increments. Then you move up that like no like less increments, I guess. So obviously, the higher I kick, the more like the harder I will land. That's just based on how quick I go up and hit it. Not bad that I come down. I don't have that time to think about you know how I'm landing, that's based on like, I'm so focused on actually hitting the target. So you see here, the target is just about at my head level. And I know that in myself, I cannot kick it just by standing in one place. So I will start doing like a walk up start. So, so it's basically the same thing, except you're doing the walk up and you're stopping at two feet and you're kicking it. And it's very important that your feet do take off at the same time, just as for the rules of competition. Then you continue going up. So this is this is about the point where I'd like walk up underneath the target, lift up at it, and like kind of like shrug, and then continue picking up. Just you know, give the crowd a little entertainment. You see there, I missed the target. Um, I didn't touch it whatsoever. I was just like a little bit off the permit. So this is where my other competitors would take their turn. I know, you do three in a row. No, you don't. So this is where my other competitors would take their turn, then it would come back to me and I would try again. If I missed again, my, my other competitors who missed the first time would go again, then I would try my third time. Yeah, that's probably as high as I can go today, just because like I barely hit that one. And I don't really feel like I can hit this one all the way up here. It's really hot in Nova Scotia, and I'm sweating a lot right now. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm sure if you're competing, you get little breaks in between and stuff, so. <laughs> yeah, so I, like especially when you're competing, you do have other people around you. So when you kick, you can like kind of take a break as the other competitors do their kicks as well. Maybe you can take a little break while I ask a couple of questions. <laughs> um, my first question is, where do you take off? Like, how far away from it? Do you have any idea or? So some people do measurements. Um, I'll bring the target back down so I can show you guys. So once the target is like around here, uh, when I was first starting out, I would measure out every single time, no matter the height. I had no confidence in myself on like where to actually take off. So I go an arm away, just because like that's roughly the size of your leg as well, but like mine are a little bit longer. So I, so I put my hands out to where I'm touching the target just barely. I did like a shimmy backwards, and that's where I would take off if I'm just standing still. Other than that, I would take three steps backwards. And that would uh, equal one step forward to me just because I take big steps when I'm like striding up to hit it. That's really cool. I didn't know. It's cool when you can measure stuff with your arms. Um, another question I have is just uh, who made the, the stand and how does it work? Uh, so this stand was made by my father. 
Um, it's really similar to like a mic stand where it has like one part that like goes straight up that stays and then one part that's that you can like adjust to like different height levels. Um, so this seal is hanging down from the top part of the stand where the string runs along this entire board and then it comes down. I'll actually grab my phone and show you guys. So uh, the seal is here. Then like it goes up along this, it comes all the way down. And then the string comes here where this is where I was adjusting it. This is where I was adjusting it to where I can just like loop it around. I can actually like loop this string around. And that's how I adjusted the height. So by like looping around more, oh yes, let me do that. Wait. This is hard. So like the more I loop the string around, the higher the seal goes. So that's how that stand works, obviously. Uh, some people do just use mic stands where they just like pull the string down more and more as it goes higher and higher. Engineering, ooh. <laughs> yes. It's really cool. Does anyone else have any questions? I feel like I have so many questions, but I don't wanna <laughs> bumble. Ask away. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Yeah, yeah. I'm wondering about your like ankle strength and landing on one foot is obviously very difficult. Do you do any kind of like conditioning or other sports to help you with this? Um, I don't do any sports that particularly help with high kick. Um, although I do do other sports just to keep myself active and just kind of like be in a good shape. Yeah. Oh, to be young again, you can just... Ready? Hurt yourself. <laughs> mm. Really cool. Um, what What is your favorite of the jumps? Um, one foot because that is the highest one I can go, and I find it like the easiest. And I like when things are easy. <laughs> I feel like it's also a crowd pleaser, like being able to stand under it and be like, "Oh, I can jump this high." That's really cool. It is quite a crowd either like when I whenever I do it in front of large uh, crowds, the crowd does get like really involved and like they cheer a lot. Um, like when I hit like a very tall height, they like go crazy. If I miss, they go like, oh <laughs> Yeah, it's just it's a very it's a it's a big crowd pleaser for sure, if you can do it to like above your head. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Do you ever get any like strained muscles from like your legs <laughs> being Oh yeah, hundred percent. Um, like right behind your uh, thigh here, that will get strained if you like don't condition properly or if you like do it like continuously over and over again. So it's uh, very important to take breaks just to like ensure that you don't get as many strained muscles and you don't actually like injure yourself in the long run. Nice, nice. Really cool. Francis, Steve, anybody wanna <laughs> demonstrate? Kevin had a good question in the comments. Yeah, I can read it out. Uh, Kevin is asking, have you been to any Inuit games competitions or plan to? I am asking to see if you can get an urban Inuit team together. Uh, uh, I've not been to any recently. I did compete in middle school for RJ Sports representing my school. Uh, I know that uh, RJ Sports are featured at NAG and other big competitions, but I haven't been to them before at Big Sports. Yeah, yeah, that would be so cool in the future if we could get mm -hmm. it together. Um, CIA will be doing more sports and like fitness programming soon. So I'm hoping Arctic Games can be like a regular part of that. Um, yeah. Cause it's such a great like overall fitness kind of thing. Like it mm -hmm. doesn't miss any body parts. You're working everything. And then, like, obviously, if I do get the chance, I will try to, like, compete in the future if I can, like, either, like, fit into my schedule because I am quite busy. Like, if this quarantine wasn't happening, I would be quite busy. Yeah. It'd be awesome to have um, some uh, teams from your area come to Alaska. We would welcome and host you guys. Yeah, that would be amazing. Ooh, we're gonna have to take you up on that. That's so cool. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. 
Captain. <laughs> um, yeah, I know that Nag is supposed to be in Halifax, right? It was supposed to be. Or yeah, that... uh, it was supposed to be in Halifax this year, although it did get canceled. Um, yeah. I was planning to go for swimming, although I didn't get the chance because of other commitments and because of one thing. Well, I don't know if it's been postponed or not. Maybe it'll be next year. <laughs> Maybe we'll <laughs> have a reunion there. Uh, Kevin wants to be on the team too. Kevin, what uh, Arctic Games are you good at? Sorry, yeah, I'm, uh, <clears throat> I would be good at uh, telling these guys <clears throat> what they're doing wrong and what they could do better. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. No, I'm very impressed. Um, <clears throat> it's cool that you're, um, yeah, you're talking about uh, some, some of the key points like balance and you're showing um, what it, <clears throat> uh, what, like some characters you have to prove to the judges, like how, you know, um, confident you were in your kick and stuff like that. So yeah, cool. I would be good at um, coaching, maybe like getting a free trip to Alaska out of it. <laughs> That's not the spirit of the games. <laughs> I think it is actually. <laughs> awesome. Um, does anybody else have any questions about the one foot high kick? Um, I'm wondering, are there any like kind of cool down exercises you do? Do you stretch again at the end? Uh, so yeah, um, uh, I just do the same stretches that I did at the beginning because uh, if they're good for warming up your muscles, they're most likely good for uh, cooling down your muscles. So again, for, the, for like the high kick, I especially focus on the leg that I was kicking with because that is the one that will take the most amount of strain. So again, just like taking your leg and like pull, like pulling it up, that's a very good one to kind of like relieve all that stress in your thighs. Another very good one, especially like pulling down, is if you can get a wall, placing your toes up against the wall with your heel still on the um, floor and just like pushing up against it. This will help your hamstring and like the lower part of your calf. So those are the two primary stretches I do when pulling down, especially from one foot and high kick. And they'll just help release all of the lactic acid, which is a byproduct of working out and using your muscles. Okay, Kyle is saying goodbye. He says, thank you so much for sharing. Um, I don't know if it's Alan or Alana or somebody in the chat is asking if, do you know if there are any camps to learn Inuit games in the Toronto area? And I guess working in Toronto, I would say not yet. Hopefully soon. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> what else am I gonna say? Are we gonna see a muskox <laughs> wrestle? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, my mother and my father will demonstrate <laughs> the muskox. You and like? You know. um, so this is a tra traditional game as well, uh, a test of your strength. So yeah, traditionally it is men against men and women against women, but right now we're doing my mom right now because there are two volunteers and I'm <laughs> oh, so, so what happens is, I'll take my phone as well. So, so you see here, their heads are interlocked underneath the other shoulder, and and same on the other side. His is the same, and then you're locked in this position, kneeling down on your hands and knees, and then the rest. It's a much like tug of war, except the opposite direction. So like you're pushing instead of pulling. Yeah. Uh, so then the judge will say like three, two, one, go, and then they push against each other <laughs> as much like a tug of war. So you see, yeah, my father won that one because he pushed my mother it's, yeah, it's further like away. Over the line. So yeah. No. So that's 
Moscow, Moscow, Moscow sighting or push, whatever. I actually don't know what it's called entirely. Um, Ted says, great job from your family. <laughs> so, yeah. so then the, uh, there's another kind of like two person game and it's called leg wrestling. Uh, it is quite popular as well. So uh, uh, we'll demonstrate it and then I'll explain the rules afterwards just because I can't really explain while I'm doing it all that well. So in order to do it, you lie down um, opposite your partner. So for example, her head is, is like facing this way. So then I put my head down the other way. And you want to do like hip to head. And fill off your arms, hold your hands together. And then you go one, two, three. <laughs> So you see, we missed that. We missed each other's arms. Um, so that's just a matter of us having to redo it all. So we, again, we go one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that flexible. All right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <Two>. <laughs> 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 so the objective of that game is to flip each other. So as you saw there, we were lying down and so these were each other's legs. So you go one, two, and then on your third time you interlock and you try and flip the, your opponent. Um, it's very important that you have your shoulder, like your elbows interlocked and that you're holding your own hand and kind of like a, I don't know, nun prayer type way, I guess. Um, so if your hand slips at any time, you lose no matter if you flip your opponent or not. So it's really important that you like you keep your hands together. And again, it's it, it's a strength of your uh, strength. It's a test of your strength. And then once uh, the round is over, you flip over to your other side and you do the other side as well. Nice. Do you have to keep your other foot on the ground like planted? Yes. You have to keep your other foot on the ground uh, at all times. Then that as well, or? Sorry? Yeah. What? Do you have to keep it on the ground when you like interlock legs? Yeah, so uh, one foot has to stay on the ground at all times. And then when you interlock legs, you try and flip the other, other person. Nice, nice. Looks like you need quite a bit of leg flexibility. Yeah, quite a bit of leg flexibility and a lot of like core as well as leg strength to actually flip your opponent. Does it hurt your neck to do the backwards roll? No. 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 no, she it, said no. It, just looks, it just looks awkward. <laughs> yeah, it looks awkward. Um, it's not that bad when, it act, when you actually get flipped. <laughs> Over your shoulder, I guess. Yeah. That looks like so much fun. Does anybody in do any participants have anybody to practice with? Steven kids? <laughs> Maybe. Angie's yeah. got a job. <laughs> ah, so cute. <laughs> I don't know if you can re leg wrestle with the dog, but. <laughs> If there's no other questions, um, those are all the Arctic sports that I have prepared to show you guys. Yeah, I just want to thank everyone for coming. Yeah, it's been so, so great. Thanks so much, Bailey. I think we've got lots to practice. Um, if anybody wants to send videos to TIA, we'd love to hear them of you practicing. <laughs> Um, and yeah, this has been such a great start to our Inukaluk youth workshops. So, so great. So I'm sure you're super, super tired. Thanks so much for showing us on such a hot day. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I'm definitely sweating. Ooh, I would be too, for sure. But yeah, does anybody else have any questions, comments? Oh, group photo. We have to take a photo. Francis is usually the one that reminds me to take a photo. <laughs> so I'm going to stop recording now. Are you all good?